Edmund B. Piper designed the Piper's forceps for facilitating the delivery of the aftercoming head in a breech delivery in 1924. There is a cephalic curve to accommodate the baby's head and a pelvic curve to allow the instrument to follow the curve of the maternal pelvis. You'll notice that they have a space between the shanks, that they are long forceps, that they are springy. Uh, they, they have some bounce to them. They're designed for one purpose, the after coming head in a breech delivery. These blades are applied as a straight pelvic application. It doesn't matter if the baby's head is turned to the left or the right, you are not trying to get the bimalar application you would normally do for a vertex delivery. Also different from forceps in the instance of a vertex is that these blades are applied from below upward. So the operator is usually in a very low position, kneeling on the floor or on an extraordinarily low stool so that the blade is then directed upward and slid into position. To accomplish the delivery successfully, it is ideal to have an assistant between the legs and to have another assistant guiding the head down into the pelvis. So following the head with manual pressure uh, applied on the abdomen. The baby has been delivered such that the cord, the arms and legs are all out, but in order to apply the forceps, they're actually in the way. So it's preferred to wrap a towel around to hold the arms and legs. Roll it like a package at the top and put some clamps on to hold it in place. Now you hold it steady. Forceps are first with a phantom application. And then since these are applied from below, it is best to be in a kneeling position. Hold that. Now there is always a space between the head and the shoulder. So the blades go up and in as a pelvic application. You are not trying to apply these directly to the cheeks. So from below and up. traction, not jerking back and forth or twisting or doing anything to extend the head. I have one finger on the back of the occiput to keep the head flexed and then it's a matter of backing down and pulling steady. You can evaluate the perineum to see if an episiotomy is needed and if not, then just keep pulling steadily. Do not bring the blades above the horizontal because as you can see, the toes of the blade would otherwise be highly likely to cause a sulcus tear. Now you can dissemble and do the resuscitation.
So you got the baby. Take the forceps away. Support the head. Unwrap the blanket. And we're all set. To wrap up the arms, legs, and cord, make it like a little burrito. So pass the towel underneath, bring it up to the top, and roll it over. And let's clamp it to hold it securely. Now, there is always a space between the head and the shoulder. So although the cervix may be clamped down, there is always that space. And you find the cervix if it's there, slip the blade up inside, articulate the blades. This is a pelvic application. Doesn't matter if the head is turned left or right. You then lower the body on and then you pull down and you keep the head flexed as it comes out. Then just keep pulling steadily 